I'm excited because uh, this season we're in, maybe see this presence, I'm sorry, and if we could very quickly, those who are um, age group um, five and up, oh, 12 and under, be released to Children's Church Experience, 12 to five, now five to 12, that's what they give me, five to 12. Uh, you will be released to our Children's Church Experience. They're gonna, uh, we're just trying to open up very slowly and delicately. Make sure you have your masks and all that stuff and we have a ample space provided that will allow them to go to experience uh, their own educational element. I do want to apologize for our teens at this time. We are um, uh, experiencing uh, some things. We are, some of the, our, the workers had to go through a time of um, quarantining and, and so forth and so on. And they'll be back shortly and uh, we'll get back to our teen experience. Amen? Amen. Y'all ready for the word? Yeah. All right. Let's, let's prepare ourselves uh, for what I believe is going to be really good. We're going to be in Luke in the second chapter. Um, I'm going to try to take you through this. Um, Pastor Grant was in our Asbury location and did a phenomenal job. Um, and, um, and so it, it's great when someone goes before you and I just get the highlight. I get to do the highlight reel of, uh, of his conversation. And so we know that the gift of expectation, that expectation creates a door to every decision. We understand how important our perspective is. Those who have been joining us on the prayer line and uh, you got a, a whole bunch of air full of, of perspective and expectation. It's interesting as we move into um, this gift of insight, um, when I begin to look at where to bring this through, uh, I, I looked at Matthew, and Matthew gives us a, a Jesus' a genealogy and an awesome account of the wise men. And I looked into John, and he tells the story of, of the deity of Christ, the, where the word becomes flesh. And we know Mark uh, skips um, J Jesus into adulthood for the most part. Uh, but it's only in the book of Luke are we ushered into a holy moment surrounding Jesus' birth, that includes the shepherds, that gives us a little bit of insight into where we need to uh, dive, in, dive in on today. And so with that being said, uh, I was even as I was working on this, I was looking at the, the narrative of stories through Christmas, the Christmas carols and the Christmas plays and the interpretation of the story of Jesus' birth. And um, it's interesting how many artistic licenses have been out there regarding this, how uh, they, you know, they, you see these wise men, but very few times do you see the shepherds. Matter of fact, the shepherds get put with the wise men in timing's sake, but that's just artistic license. Y'all agree? Y'all agree? Yes. Okay, good. If you don't agree, just say you agree to act like you're on track with me. And so I, I began to think about how distorted these things were because uh, the insight began with the shepherds. Um, the shepherds were on the scene before the wise men, and um, the shepherds got a level of insight that I believe we can peek into how to really grasp a handle on how we can make this work for us uh, in this present day. L let's look at the story in Luke 2, and um, if you allow me, to just uh, tell you the first halves of it, and then we'll get to the meaningful elements I want to draw out. So it, the, it was a night where the shepherds were staying in the fields. They're, they're there hanging out, and suddenly this angel comes unto them, and um, in the radiance, the, set, the, the Bible says, of the Lord appeared surrounding them, and the Bible says that these shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them and said, don't be afraid, he said. I, I'm, I'm bringing you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Y'all with me so far? He says, the Savior, the angel says, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has, gone, has been born today in Bethlehem and the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of clothing, lying in the manger. And if I had time, I would kind of precursor and go all into that, but for, for time's sake, let me, let me jump to where I want to point out. It says, suddenly, everybody say suddenly. The angel was joined by a vast host of other armies of heavenly praises God and saying, glory to God in the highest of heaven and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. Did y'all hear that suddenly? Yeah. 
I like this because this is a degree, uh, uh, it said a vast host of heavenly armies. I began to think to myself, why did a vast host of heavenly armies have to come? Couldn't it have just been the praisers, the worshipers? But this was a vast heavenly army. I'm, I'll give insight into that later if I could remember. <laughs> when the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Now the text tells us they hurried to the village. They find Mary and Joseph. They're with the, they see the baby lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds begin to tell a degree of insight to Mary. What had happened with the angels, they tell them. And they say all who have heard the shepherds that says they were astonished, but Mary kept it, all these things, in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. So we see in this uh, story here, this age story here, that still uh, rings true and present for us now, uh, that there was a degree of insight, and that insight was a gift from God. If you're writing, just write that simple point. Insight is a gift from God. Uh, this is interesting because this is a principle that we can stand on on many facets, but uh, the key here is they got insight from God. The angel comes and tells them this, uh, so, that, hey, something's about to happen in this big, and here's the detail. Can I help some of us? Uh, you are uh, in, standing in a season where if your insight is coming from any source, it's probably faulty. I, 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 I've seen the news. I've watched it, and they'll tell me it's going to snow. It don't snow. They tell me it's going to rain. It don't rain. They say it's winter time in New Jersey. It's 61 degrees outside. And I'm saying to myself, what's wrong with their data? What's happening? And the fact of the matter is, they cannot they can try to project. They can try to predict. But unless they plug into the inside of heaven, they're just doing that. And I begin to realize that the church is in a peculiar time and season where if the body of Christ does not get insight for this next season, we will be extremely confused. Do I take vaccines or do I not take vaccines? Do I, what, what do I wear? Do, we, we will be extremely confused. So there is a need to receive this gift this year. Somebody say, I need this gift. You, we, we need it. We need it at a level that would give us clarity because you cannot hear from anything else and get the revelation you need for your next season. Tarot cards aren't working. Zodiac signs, they're shifting them. I read somewhere that they're now changing the zodiac. They're changing the meaning of certain, uh, they found new data. And, and I'm talking to believers, because believers sometimes we fall victim to the insight of a zodiac sign. You Pi I'm Pisces. Gemini, I'm Aries, so that means I got, what? If you have based your insight upon the wrong area, it is possible that you might have an improper source and now your insight is not insight at all. Oh, okay, I better, let me go back to, to okay. 
Let, let me give uh, supportive data to this Luke text to show you how imperative insight is. Jesus uh, was with his disciples, and he asked a simple question, who do men say that I am? Uh, Simon Peter answers, y'all know the story. He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed, this, was, this insight was not given by man, but by my Father in, come on. So let's define this insight. Can we, can we define it? Those who are writing, taking notes. Insight could be defined as the power of acting or seeing into a situation. Uh, I, I love it. They, they said the word penetration. They said a sight of viewing an interior of anything. That means it's an introspect of something. Another synonym they use is a real churchy word that we like, uh, 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 discernment. So, so, yeah, it's a good word. It's a good word. Uh, 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 don't be afraid of it. Uh, we need a degree of what I believe we're missing this year is a level of insight about the year that would cause you to lose it and say, this was my best year. No, 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 because you, you, we don't have that insight. We're looking at the, the negative, all the stuff that's going on, and you don't realize in your Bible were the same scenarios that went on in that time. But if you don't have insight from God, you'll look at this season and say, it was terrible. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it was some bad stuff that happened. But uh, during this season, uh, really, it sifted out those who are real and those who are fake. It exposed false prophets. Should I stay off of that? Tell me. Stay off of it. Oh, I should touch it? Oh, he get, I got permission. All throughout the evangelical church, they were prophesying of a presidency that did not manifest. No, you, you play softly. No, you need to play softly behind this. No, they, 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 they were prophetic words from giants in the kingdom. Giants in the kingdom that were giving prophetic insight that they did not have. And they were going off of their flesh not the Spirit of God. I am going to get in trouble with this. Please delete this. Please delete this. And so we have to be so careful to walk in areas where you did not hear God. Oh, I done, I'm, I'm so far out there. I'm so far out there. Can I just say this? Stop saying you're leaving a church and God told you to leave. Am I treading? I, no, no, no. no. Oh, oh, God told me it's time to leave. God, are you serious? Are you really going to put that on him and you know what you're feeling? Because you're going off of your feelings. Nothing. Oh, um, I don't know why I'm out there. I'm too far off. I'm, I'm okay. See, because insight from God would tell you, wait a minute, to walk by faith and not sight. But what you're seeing is your perspective and your expectations not being met. So you're shifting your life based off of those elements, but not tying them into God. Oh, I better, I better support all that with Scripture. No, I need to support that with Scripture. 2 Timothy 1, uh, 2 and 7, because you can't make such uh, dogmatic statements like that without scriptural relevancy and connectivity because uh, it's important. <laughs> uh, 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 second Timothy, can I read it from the Amplified? Okay, okay, Second Timothy 2, 7. Okay, watch this. Think over the things I'm saying and grasp their application. <laughs> For the Lord will grant you insight and understanding into everything. That means if I don't get insight and understanding, then it may not be the Lord. That means you can't just speak 
just because something tickles your fancy or makes you feel a little warm on the inside. Oh, I felt something. I don't know. But what did God say? Not because you can't sense what God's saying. It got to be something on the inside. Okay. All right. Can I give a warning label to all of this? Let me issue a warning label. Every prescription has a warning label because there's side effects. Um, even with insight, we can fall if we don't apply the insight to every situation. No, because some of us, we get insight with no application. So you get an insight, but God's saying, are you applying the insight to this moment? So some of us will get insight, oh, God wants me to do this, but then there's no application in that moment, and we fall. Oh, uh, Okay, can I, maybe I should put it a different way. Uh, let, let's put it a different way. Let, let, let's, let's, let's work this. You cannot see outside of you what you fail to see inside of you. Oh, my gosh. Please, please, let me take a few people that are with me. With me. Where, where are you at? Uh, okay, because see, here's the thing. If, 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 if you, can't, you can't see outside. People are trying to see outside of them, but there's nothing on the inside. Hold on. That, how do I? I have to have some word on the inside. because so It's the word that gives entrance to understanding. Okay, Psalms 1, 119.30. I, I don't want to just say stuff without uh, scriptural support. Well, Psalms 119, 130 says, the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Did y'all hear what I just said? So that means that if I'm trying to get a level of insight, I should be in my word on a continual basis so some level of revelation rocks me and tells me what to do next. Some of us are trying to ask our friends or trying to ask this person or consulting in places where God said, I've given you the gift of insight. you got to come to me. And we're like, you're, 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 you're falling into the trap of there's nothing on the inside. Can I just say this? I don't know who I need to encourage in this moment. If you're getting weary in your well-doing, it's something missing on the inside. If you're getting tired in your production of what God's asking you to do, there's something missing on the inside. If, if you're like, oh, I'm feeling disturbed and discombobulated, uh, the time, the season feels a little distorted, there's something missing on the inside. This is an inside job. You want insight by, by what you see. And that's not how it operates. You cannot get insight just by what you see. Something has to get on the inside. It, it, I like it. So that's why the angel speaks to, to the shepherds and he's trying to give them insight. Now let me tell you what's, how you're going to notice uh, you're at the right place. And he starts giving him description of the child. He'll be wrapped this way, put this way, and he'll be at this location. He's giving him insight so when they get there, they won't miss it. Oh, okay, I could, I could tell. Okay, let, let me, hmm. I don't know who this is for. Let me just throw this out there. The spiritual quality that enables a person to appreciate God's mind and God's will is a matter of insight. Y'all with me? So it's given by God and it should be sought after by the believer. So what God oftentimes is trying to get you to do is have a level of insight that will affect your perspective, that will put you in expectation. No? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Let, let me say that. You said it this way. Let me, let me, let me give it in an intellectual manner because it, it, the, the man of God put it this way. Perspective is born from insight. Y'all yeah. should be writing. Insight simply means you're seeing from a different source. Yes? yes? So that means whenever God's trying to give me insight, 
He's trying to say, I'm the source that will allow you to get a perspective about your problem. So that means when you're going through something, you're looking at your situation and God's saying, come on, get the insight from my source so I can give you a perspective about what you're going through. You're going, I'm going through so much, you don't know what I'm going through. That's why I can't serve. That's why I can't do it. That's why I can't give. That's why I can't sow. And God's saying, oh, you chose a different source. You picked your job. Oh, you picked the doctor's report. Oh, you picked something else. And that's what you're leaning on. And God's saying, I wish I could be the source. Because if I could be the source, I'll give you a level of insight that I'm making you in this moment. That I'm, just, I'm really building you in this time, in your test, in your trial. I'm developing you to be like Christ. I want to be like Christ. Like Christ. If I could be like Christ. I want to, want to, want to. Can I help you? How many people want to gain insight? In order for you to gain insight, you have to seek to know God more. You can't, you, can't, you just can't. Uh, uh, here's the thing. The more you know, no matter when the, the lights turn out, it doesn't matter. Now, now, Pastor, he could probably do this far greater than me about this knowledge experience, but um, he says something that really rocked my perspective, that darkness is not only the absence of light, it's the absence of knowledge. Yes? Okay, I got preachers telling me I'm right, so I'm going to keep moving. So, 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 if darkness is not just the absence of light, but the absence of knowledge, that whenever I come into understanding, I come to a place where insight happens, but I need the level of perspective because the source has to be right in order for me to function. Okay, let's make it simpler. I'm sorry. Let's go. Y'all know your homes. Yes? We know our houses. If the lights went out in our house and it's pitch black and we, that you can't see in front of you, it's dark. I mean, it's dark. I mean, you, I mean the lights out. Uh, Y'all remember when we, had the, when the lights, when, you, when we lost power for a while and, and, and you scrambling for, for uh, candles and you look, you going, I think I put some candles over. Y all, y all, none of y'all had that issue? Well, look, shake your head at me. Act like y'all know. Y'all looking stone-faced. No. We don't know. Look, come on. Y'all in the room. I mean, those online, they, they type it. Uh, uh, so we, we look, we found our candles. Then we, we, I, I said, wait a minute, I put a, 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 a flashlight in the closet. And I'm walking through, and I, I got my flashlight. Oh, wait, where the battery? Where the battery? Oh, oh I put the batteries. I put the battery. I can't see that good, but I think I put the battery right there. And I said, okay, wait a minute, let me open it. Um, wait, I can't see how to open it, but I remember how to open it. So I, mm, and I put the batteries in. And I go, ah, we got light. All right, guys. And we start looking for all these things. But watch this. Didn't matter about the darkness. I had a degree of knowledge about my certain. <laughs> and so because I had that knowledge, I was able to walk in places that if you came to my house, you might trip. If I came to your house, I might trip. But because of what I knew about my surroundings. Oh, I wish I could talk to someone. See, watch this. Um. Insight prevents you from missing out on what's available for your life. Oh. Y'all missed it. So they, just, you, they gotta be. Hold on. So insight tells me there's more available for my life that if I have that knowledge that no matter what I went through in 2020, no matter what I went through in this, this week, yeah. I'm able to know, wait a minute, all things yeah. are working together for my good, for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. That means all oh, my steps are ordered by the Lord. Oh, I wish I, oh, oh okay, I'm sorry. I'm, oh, I'm well over my time, I should stop. Okay, y'all are so enthusiastic. Hold on, uh, let, maybe I should support this thought. Proverbs two, for those who are, who are taking notes. Proverbs two, three and five. And it reads, yes, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. If you seek it like silver, that means seek insight and understanding like you want money. Oh, okay. 
Now, y'all know how y'all do. Y'all won't come to church because you got a job. He said, seek it like that. I'm t oh, okay, she's telling me I'm bad. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. I, I need people that will just, no, Pastor, don't do that. Uh, I, I, I mean, he's saying, seek it like silver and search for it like it's a, a hidden treasure. So he's saying, look for insight and understanding like it's hidden. That, that means that I, I, I got to know God at a level that no matter what circumstance I get in, there's a level of insight I get from him that says, uh, though they slay me, yet will I trust them. That means pressure's coming on every side. I'm going to still trust you. That means everything's coming against me, but I still see God in the midst of, uh, okay, okay. He said, while you're in those moments, that's where your searching comes from. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Come on, let's, let's verse five. Verse five, he says, then, I love he says this. Then, after you've searched for it, or you sought it out like gold, silver, like money, and you searched for it like it was hidden, he says, then, will you understand the fear of the Lord? What? Wow. Whoa. And find the, the y'all must have not heard what I heard. Y'all couldn't have. He said, then after you search for insight and understanding like silver and search for it like it was a hidden treasure, he says, then you're going to know the fear of the Lord. I swear y'all would get excited over that. Maybe the clarity of it did not come to you. Hold on. L let me bring clarity to it. He, he basically says that I'm basically, when you're searching for insight and understanding, you're going to find me. When you find me, he says, that is the beginning of the fear of the Lord. That means there's a reverence. That word fear is reverence. That means now you're going to reverence me in your situation. While you're reverencing me in that situation, he says, wait a minute, if I'm clear, he says, then you're going to find some knowledge of me. All right, I, I wish I, I, wish I want to get to point three. Do, can I? You think I? Y'all talk, talk back to me. Oh, they telling me. People online, y'all log off when you feel like it because uh, they, they done told me to go. So, 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 so wait a minute. We understand that it's based off a source, insight. My job's not my source. Somebody needs to say it. Declare one more time. Because somebody out there lost their job and they need to understand that their job is not their All right, all right, all right. So when you understand that, you're going through some things, but you're realizing, guess what? My job's not my source. Now somebody's going through a, a report from the doctor. The doctor's not my healer. Come on, somebody needs to declare it. Come on. The, that he, yes, God will use him, but he's not the healer. All right. You're trying to find love, looking for love. <laughs> and, and, and watch this. And some of us, you've been married, and you're trying to make that, that person, I'm just trying to find happiness. And, and, and you're trying to use the person as your source. Okay. Am I helping one person? You're trying to find, I want to find the right person in my life. And then, well, no, no, you need to be the right person in your own life. And, let, oh, and, as, and when you can be happy with just you, then I know how to make somebody else happy. The problem is you got so many broken people getting oh, Okay. Oh, take it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, Jesus. No, no, no. Let me skip, skip, skip. Um, I am on broken Ice. It's 60 degrees out, and it was ice out there, but it is really thin right now. It's melting. I'm, I'm going to not step there. Let me, let me move on to, some, to point three. Hmm, skip down. Hmm. Insight is connected to your understanding. You got this? I don't know if y'all are, are following this, but um, if we understand this properly, then whatever you see uh, oftentimes, it has been controlling your insight. Did you hear what I just said? 
uh, if insight is connected to understanding, some of us have been thrown off because whatever you're seeing has been has too much control over your insight. Because watch this. I, I don't want to do a barometer check, but how many times have you been in your word just this week? Oh, sh oh gosh. No, 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 no. I feel like I, I'm in dangerous territory. Start the car, somebody. I, I, I just feel like I'm in danger. Like people are going to throw darts after this. I, I, what, what, what's been controlled? You've seen so much and think you got a degree of insight, but it's not the word. You're watching too much that's controlling your insight. So you're coming up with an opinion about something that God has not spoken to you. It's just your opinion. God's trying to give you a level of insight in this season. That should have set you up for next season. This was the greatest year of application I've ever seen. Where are my members at? Do I have a member now? Just one or two. This was the greatest year of application. This, and please forgive, I don't want to say this. I, should, I won't say it because I don't want to step on anyone's. No, 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 I'm not trying to step on anybody else's toes because that thought this year was a year of 2020 vision. They couldn't see nothing. That was insight that was not from, you can't just name a year based off of its numbers. I am going to get in severe trouble about this. Oh my God. I'm, I am, this is a bad message. Because I done stepped everywhere I shouldn't have. And this was the greatest year of application that I've ever seen. That had you apply what we did, what we talked about all year, you should have some stock. You should have developed a business. We got two amens. Let me say, you should have developed a work habit that's not just outside the church, but you should be employed inside the church. Uh, I'm gonna stop. I'm, I did that. Let me. Maybe we should pray right now. Can I just give you one last statement? I'll just close. Your insight is a skill that can be developed through your understanding. Only, only by your understanding. God is trying to bring you into another level of understanding so that if you ever come up against seasons like this, you'll have a level of insight to know that no weapon formed against you will prosper. See, I done, I done, I done, I done been broke. Where my broke people at? I done been broke. Come on, you done been broke. I, I know what it's like broke. So uh, I, my wife and I, we had a statement we used to say uh, when we first had the kids. Uh, how did it go? This, um, this is the uh, brokest I'm ever going to be uh, in this season. And then uh, God, uh, what, what was the other one? It could always be worse. So we used to say that to ourselves. It was like, it could always be worse. And then we would say, but you know what? This is the brokest I'm ever going to be. And I can honestly say from then to now, we literally went, Because what we understood is we don't just have Christmas. We prepare for Christmas. And people would be like this. Yeah, I'm going to go shopping. And then next month they're going, I can't pay my rent. What happened? Some understanding was missed like Christmas was surprised. Ta-da! Christmas! I wasn't... Why everybody shopping? Oh, I better rob from Peter. I'm going to just, God knows my heart. I'm going to just take a little of my tie. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking to wrong people. I'm, oh, yes, yes, I'm going to close, close up. I'm sorry. Let me just turn this off. Yes. <laughs> Some of us need to understand something, that God is not finished with giving you insight in this season. There's more that God wants to do. If you heard anything I said, if, you, if, if anything resonated, I want you to know that God's trying to shift your insight in this season. Whatever, how many of us had some bad view of some stuff? You, you, you weren't viewing stuff right. 
say to yourself, I got an insight problem. And I only can gain insight from God. That means, God, I need you to give me revelation about my situation. Why am I going through so much? Why is this so, why am I struggling? God's saying, it's because you really aren't struggling. I'm just trying to get your attention. Someone, God's trying to just get your attention. Somebody say, you got my attention, God. Now give me insight, Father. Someone watching today, you have not come into a level of understanding that you need God. You can't do it without him. Come on, somebody declare that. I can't do it without you, God. I can't do it without you. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I pray now for those who heard your word on today. And just like the shepherds, Lord God, I pray that we would recognize what you're saying in this season. That our worship, our word, that everything that you're taking us through in this year was sent to give us insight into what you're doing. So God, I pray that you would reveal, reveal, oh God, to each hearer of this word that there's another level that you want to do in them. So God, we pray now that you would start with us. Come on, someone say, start with me, God. Start with me, start with me. Help give me a, a different perspective. Change my expectations in this season. I declare I will not be broke another day. I declare financial increase in my life. I make a declaration today, God, that this is the last season like this in my life. Come on, somebody need to declare it. This is the last season like this in my life. God, you're, you're, you're shifting and you're setting me up for a breakthrough and a blessing. And I declare that even now. Father, there's someone that's wounded, wayward, and without a Savior, and they're listening to this. I pray that they would make a decision to give you their heart. Come on, if that's you today, would you confess with me and make this simple declaration? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. And I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, you're saved. You said that, declare that. Step. Step two is God wants to give you insight. They're going to put information. I want you to connect with us so we can get you to the next step. If you're here and you made that for the first time, would you wave at me if that's your first time making that confession? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want you to know that one God loves you tremendously. And that next step, the next step is let us help you walk through that process. How do you really get more insight into knowing God? you got to get connected to a church. And before you get connected, we take you through some classes so you can learn. You don't immediately join our church, but we take you through steps so you can learn about what you need to learn. This is a teaching church. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs>